1955, Eduardo Lundardi staged a coup against populist Argentine president Juan Perón, which resulted in Perón's expulsion from the country and was the beginning of a primarily military rule that would last in Argentina until the return of Perón in 1973. This was also the beginning for the Montaneros, whose main goal was to return Perón to Argentina and to reinstate his populist policies. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left. Un caldo, digamos, algo simple, digamos, para One of the first things we did that garnered national attention was the kidnapping of Aram Buru. On May 29, 1970, Maza, along with fellow Montanero Fernando Luis Abal Medina, pretended to be military personnel and escorted retired General Pedro Aramburu out of his 8th floor apartment into an estate in the southern part of the Buenos Aires province. There were only 12 of us at the time, so we didn't have a lot of infrastructure to hold our revolutionary trials. The Montaneros assassinated Aram Baru for the crimes of stealing the body of Evita Perón. Our goals were obviously to draw attention to ourselves as a movement and punish wrongdoers. And there was much public support for the end of oppression and the return of Perón. Their violent tactics, while certainly achieving their theatrical aim, also alienated them from a majority of the Argentine public who thought such actions were going a bit too far. Additionally, their internal disorganization and failures only contributed to their demise. On August 15, 1972, with many of the Montaneros and other members of leftist organizations imprisoned, 110 prisoners planned an escape from Rawson Penitentiary. This was one of the biggest actions that the Montaneros were known for. We spent months planning this escape and it was looking good at first. Originally, we were planning to sneak out of the prison through a ground tunnel, but it kept on flooding, so we developed a new plan with the help of a prison guard, Carmelo Facio. The plan was to board buses outside of the prison and quickly flee to the airport, where they were to commandeer a plane and escape to Chile. But when the escapees exited the prison, the escape buses were nowhere to be found. There was supposed to be buses at the entrance to uh, transport us to the airport uh, where all the other Montoneros had hijacked a plane, we are going to get to Chile. But when we got there, uh, <laughs> there weren't any buses. The six leaders uh, dressed in uh, military uniforms, they would had their own transportation and got to the plane. Uh, Nineteen people who were in charge of stabilizing the prison also got away with taxis. The buses never showing up is just one example of the disorganization and poor planning of the Montanero group. There were signals letting the drivers know when they should head towards the prison and pick us up. Well, one of the leaders of the FAR revolutionary group, Jorge Levinger, apparently misread a signal. Instead of understanding it as go ahead, he thought the signal was telling him that the operation was a failure, so the buses drove away. The first six Montaneros to arrive at the airport helped to commandeer the plane. However, they got word that the National Guard had been notified and were on their way to the airport. Without knowing that 19 more escapees were on their way, the plane took off with the 19 others arriving just in time to see their lifeline leave. We literally just walked on a the plane. It was taking quite a while for everyone to get there. And when the first group arrived and told me about what had happened with the transportation, I knew that it probably wasn't going to end well. We got the call about the escape at Rawson and were told the inmates were headed in the direction of the airport. Once we got there, there were 19 escapees who were holding people in the airport prisoner, but their whole operation was a total disaster. The remaining 19 escapees peacefully surrendered and were arrested by the National Guard, but took them to a local military base. At 3 a.m. on the third night at the base, the escapees were rounded up and shot. Austin was still in chaos because of the breakout, so we decided to hold them at the military base for the time being. That disorganization cost a lot of people their lives. Disorganization and division characterized the movements of the Montaneros and the entire left in the early to mid-1970s. All the unrest coming from the left alienated civilians and villainized the Montaneros. The PRT and its military division, the ERP, didn't agree with the Montaneros' grassroots tactics, so we stayed separate from them. Although the Montaneros couldn't be blamed for all of the violence in Argentina, they certainly were responsible for the chaos that ensued during the Aziza Massacre. In 1973, 
Perón returned to Argentina after the crumbling government's efforts to resist the Monteneros was deemed ineffective. He was set to land in Buenos Aires at the international airport. What was set to be a happy revival of idealistic early days in Argentina turned into the bloody Aziza massacre, leaving 13 dead and over 300 injured. Over the roar of the people, we heard gunshots and distant screams. Then the gunshots got louder and louder, and there were snipers on Perón's platform, and we didn't know at that time. Um, and the person standing next to me started bleeding, and I realized that it was actually my brother. He died that day. The entirety of the event lasted two hours, but it felt like an eternity for those in attendance. There was sheer panic. Many thought the right-wing Peronists staged the attacks, and when Perón later distanced himself from the leftists, calling them radicals and becoming a conservative, they had no calling left. Many believe José López Rodríguez, personal secretary to Juan Perón, created the AAA, an Argentinian right-wing group that is suspected to have sparked the Aziza massacre. There is still controversy over the true identity of the snipers on Perón's speaking platform. Right-wing groups weren't targeting the Monteneros. The Monteneros were armed and entering the rally. It is suggested that the Monteneros were heavily armed and dangerous to the crowd. They were seen as radicals by Perón, which strengthens the argument that security could have carried out the attacks. Former President Perón has made many statements on this time and time again. They are radicals. They are a threat to society. They kidnap and they kill. We couldn't have them in a crowd with millions of people. They claim they used whatever means necessary to achieve their goals. Well, the security at the Buenos Aires airport used whatever means necessary to keep the Argentinian people safe. When you're betrayed by your leader and your sense of inspiration, what are you meant to do? We lost the support of our Peronist brothers and our hero. We were angry. We were heartbroken. We wanted Peron back. The Montaneros have always had an evolving relationship with Peron. By the time Peron returned, there was this communication gap that couldn't be breached. He was used to working with the fathers and the grandfathers of the current leftist Montaneros, a whole generation very different from the Peronists we see today. It was absolute chaos leading up to Peron's arrival. Seas of people were waiting for him as far as the eye could see, most of them working class political activists. These Peronists used to miscalculate how Peron's belief would change before his arrival having had believed in the legend of Perón for so long. This massacre has not only shattered all illusions of their former hero, but has been an important wake-up call to the cause against governmental repression. You have to evolve in order to fit the needs of your people, even if that means contradicting yourself. The Montoneros have proven themselves to be treacherous and mercenary insurgents. They stand in the way of peace, stand in the way of social reform, they will not get away with these violent actions. The Aziza massacre was a brilliant maneuver on the part of the government to isolate the Peronist youth forces. He didn't care what happened to his former supporters. He defended the people that he thought would best keep him in power. For decades, the workers of our splendid nation have put up a valiant struggle, one worthy of dignified support. Dignified! I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Perón has marginalized the Montaneros and has undervalued their support in bringing him out of exile. And that hurts. It's not only the physical betrayal, but also an ideological one, you know? Che Guevara once said that the guerrillas are the fighting vanguard of the people. We are that vanguard. We stand for the people. I'd like to take the opportunity of thanking all of the parties, the real political parties, ones made up of grown-up men that have been so adult as to help govern our beautiful Argentina with cooperation and compromise. Not only did the Peronist party have to deal with violence and negative public opinion coming from other leftist groups, but also had to deal with divisions within their own party. We were automatically at odds with the more conservative factions of the Peronists. We thought they had gotten too bourgeois and had lost sight of our socialist goals. They thought that we were impatient and violent. When Peron came back into power, our first mission was to clean up our camp and get people in order. This included the kidnapping and murder of Union boss, Jose Rucci. Even though he had started his life in poverty and originally dedicated himself to the revolutionary socialist values, once he got a taste of money and power, he started cozying up next to the rich and forgetting his roots. So we kidnapped and killed him. We needed to eliminate the defectors from our group, and Richie was one of them. 
Crone was extremely angry because Ricci was one of his closest political friends, and it caused more fractions within the Peronists and the Montaneros, even though it was originally intended to promote unity. The effects of the violence manifested itself in public opinion. I was just so sick of all the killings. So many civilians were killed. It just all seemed so unnecessary. Perone was back. What more did they want? Despite their best efforts, the Montaneros gained a reputation close to that of guerrilla terrorists. This, combined with several instances where lack of coordination resulted in failed events, such as the escape at Trelu, ultimately led to Perón's distancing himself from the Montaneros and his eventual outright condemnation of their efforts. Many Montaneros saw this as a final call to arms, a final struggle for the fate of the country. We still had goals though. Even if Perón abandoned us, we could not abandon Argentina. Increased violence from the Montaneros only led to a more violent crackdown from the government. Perón died shortly after he officially distanced himself from the Montaneros, and the subsequent regimes did their best to completely eliminate the Montaneros, as well as anyone with leftist leanings. The reminiscence of the dirty war waged against the Argentine people is still felt today. Oh,